Winding and winding upward between boulders as we ascend the nearly sheer cliffs. At last, squeezing between an agave and a scrub oak, we climb up and behind the three sisters. Hidden here, hundreds of feet up in the air, there is a notch in the towering cliffs which leads to a narrow ravine which goes back surprisingly far. Stashed away in this narrow ravine are the ruins of an 800-year-old Sanaguan Pueblo. Much of the stonework is still intact, and the ground is littered with pottery shards, rock hammers, scraping tools. Alongside the Pueblo are pictographs painted onto the rock in white. The images include a woman with her hair done in Hopi squash blossom whorls. There are pictures of serpents, monsters, outlines of hands, and tiny little feet, perhaps depicting migration journeys. I pick up a corn cob, turning it over and over in my fingers, amazed that this vegetable has lasted 800 years. The red rock here is stained with black stripes, black stripes caused by rainwater dumping off the mesa top and powerful flash floods. It is these bursts of moisture which make this tiny canyon, hidden way up high, such good farmland. The small basin holds a little grove of walnut trees, roots bathing in the moist soil, and on the edge of the field, directly in front of the small pueblo, are lots of... Thank you so much. <laughs> on the edge of the field, directly in front of the pueblo, are large flat stones, twice the size of coffee tables, piled in such a way as to make a tiny granary underneath. Under the stone are more corn cobs, corn stalks, and husks, bits of dried squash, vegetables which have survived for centuries. I find a mass of matted fibers and agave quid. This small chunk of cactus was chewed like gum and spit out here on the ground. How amazing to find this carelessly discarded relic, an artifact which was once so private that a human being held it in their mouth. You can't help but wonder if with today's DNA technology, we couldn't somehow recreate the genetic structure of the chewer. Yet with gum being gum, always and all through the ages, there is probably absolutely no way to revive the flavor. Armando picks up a corn husk and smiles. Armando understands growing corn. Like many of my co-workers, he is mojado, what we call a wetback. As a little boy growing up in Mexico, he was frequently asked to walk behind the plow so his family could plant fields of corn. And often the blade of the plow would overturn ancient Mayan figurines, bits of stone arms and legs tossed and turned in giant upheavals, then left to lie in the fields again. The Sinagua, related to the Anasazi and Hohokam, were descendants of a cultural tradition coming up from Mexico. Corn, pottery, and their advanced astronomical sciences all came from Mesoamerica. The famous ball courts of the Maya and the Aztec were played here. In fact, ball courts litter Arizona. In fact, there's two ball courts at Sacred Mountain, east of town, and there's, there's, there's two more ball courts at Tuzigu, west of town. Ball court to the north at Wupatinus, ball courts to the south on the Agua Fria. Petroglyphs of the Aztec rain god Tlaloc are scattered across Arizona too. Tlaloc is a god to whom offerings are still made. Gifts of incense, blood, and flowers laid on ancient stone altars in present-day Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras. Snakes, such as those painted on the walls at Three Sisters Ruins, are believed to possibly represent Quetzalcoatl. And there is one icon repeated on the wall at Three Sisters again and again, which I can translate directly from the Aztec codices. It is the symbol for the planet Venus, or Miss Morningstar, as she was known in the later Native American theologies, the grandmother.
as she was referred to by the Maya. Armando smiles and nods, this is my country, but the people who lived in these ruins, these were his people. I can recite from archaeology textbooks, but he is the one who has a direct lineage here.